We're live. Hey everybody, uh, we're live once again for yet another episode of Guy Q Live. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, it's Ask Men Headquarters. We do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. We typically have fun. We usually do like a sex and dating show, grooming, fitness, all that stuff, which is great stuff. We love to talk about that stuff. But this week has kind of been a bit of a crazy week. Of um, course. The last two weeks have actually been quite, quite hectic. Yet again, uh, of course, the mass shooting in Orlando, and then uh, this morning, uh, news of Joe Cox, and there was a shooting uh, last week just before the Orlando mm -hmm. um, Where happening. Christina Grimmie was actually shot by a crazy fan. So... I guess the question I want to talk about today, and yes, again, it's not going to be, it's going to be less fun. So maybe instead of doing a high five, we'll do a low five. A little bit of a low five. A little low five a today. Low five. A little low five today. Yeah. We want you to get your, your questions and thoughts and ideas ready. Um, think about, uh, what we're talking about here. I mean, Guy Q is really a forum where we get your information, your thoughts, your comments, your ideas. We want to get that engagement. We want to talk about, I don't really want to pick a fight either. You know no, what I mean? No, we, we want to keep it, you know, I want we to just want to have a discussion with you guys. Talk about it. Maybe find some solutions as to like what's going on you know as well I, as kind of you know bring awareness to the topic because yeah. it is a hot topic right now and it is clearly an issue yeah i mean the the the, the lesbian gay uh and bisexual trans queer questioning community was targeted uh very specifically um i have gay friends i have muslim friends i have muslim gay friends no joke um you know so i, I don't really understand how someone can get to this level of hate uh enough to actually go and take lives in this way it's Hard to understand, hard to comprehend. Uh, we can't control hatred, obviously. Nope. But let's focus on what we can control. And maybe gun control is the answer. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But I kind of want to open up the forum. You know, we'll never really be able to eradicate evil in the world. It exists everywhere. Can't it's like it. energy. It's going to be recycled no matter what. There's just hateful people out there. But what we can do is limit, you know, action. And yep. to be proactive about it. And to be safe. It's tough. And it's tough to... Forgive me, I was a little parched, I'm getting a little, little water. Yeah, it, we want people to be safe, we want people to be smart. And, and, you know, gun violence isn't just an American problem. Uh, gun violence happens all over the world. We happen to be Canadian. Uh, but this is kind of close to my heart. I have family in the States. I have uh, friends in the States, as I'm sure uh, you do, Bree. Um, you know, I'm proud that I'm Canadian, but, you know, what's going on in the States, I mean, this it's a phenomenal country, and mm -hmm. I feel like you guys can maybe do better with regards to these things, and I don't know where to start, but I kind of want to, as I say, open up the forum to talk about this, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're using Guy Q today as a forum to sort of say, well, what's going on, you know? Mm -hmm. can, we, can we talk about gun control? Uh, I want to get your ideas, your thoughts, your questions ready. The real question actually comes from one of our Guy Q readers mm -hmm. who wrote, do we need more or less gun control in America? This is from a few months ago, by the way. Yeah. It's definitely a huge topic, and one, this goes on to say, uh, this was by Crimson, as a matter of fact. Crimson was the, uh, was the reader who wrote this. He says, it's definitely a huge topic and one that divides people. From my point of view, the stats are on one side and history, pride, and passion are on the other. There's some validity to both of those sides, but I also don't want to die from somebody shooting me. Nobody does, for the most part. Do guns make America stronger or just put us more in danger? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's a difference between taking away people's guns entirely and then controlling or being more diligent with who can buy firearms, and what kind of firearms they can buy. Exactly, and I think that the most common misconception and why people get so heated about it because like, they're like, well, this is infringing on our rights. We don't want to you know, lose our rights. But sure. we're not suggesting, or not we, but the government or activists aren't suggesting that we lose the right to have guns. No. But to simply regulate it more and yeah. to be safe about it. Yeah. For there to be more of a screening process when it comes to something that's deadly. Right. And I, you know, for the record, you know, you guys may see me. You got to look a little kind of hipster, a little fashioned out. Sometimes I got the crazy beard. And think, oh, this guy is a full liberal. I'm actually not anti-gun. You know, I fired guns. I've gone hunting. Uh, I thought about purchasing a firearm. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not anti-gun. I do see a problem, however, with anybody being able to buy a semi-automatic weapon inside of 15 minutes, though. That mm -hmm. for me doesn't make sense. If you're not military or police, why do you need an assault rifle? That I, I will go on the record as saying I just don't understand why you would need that. Maybe there's a way that you can do that with a massive, like, massive screening. I don't know if you still want... Like, I fired an AK-47. I fired, I've gone, been to a gun range. It's enjoyable. That's like, a, you that's know, also I, I understand... A it's a controlled environment. Yeah. It's different. It is different. But the reality... It, it comes to... It is different. Uh, it is a controlled environment. Shooting range is, is a controlled environment. But at the end of the day, a gun is a simple machine that has only... It serves only one purpose, truly, and that is to kill, to end lives. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of, you know, cars... Medicine, mm -hmm. campfires, alcohol, uh, machinery, 
It's all controlled for safety reasons. All of it. None of that stuff you can just automatically, you can't, you can't start a fire somewhere without, you know, a, a park warden coming over and being like, I'm sorry, you can't build a fire here, sir. It's, it's a dry season. It mm -hmm. will risk lighting the entire forest on fire and killing lots of people and animals mm -hmm. and destroying, you know, forests. You know, I can't walk into a pharmacy and buy all the medicine I want. Uh, because I need a licensed medical practitioner exactly. and to it, give me a prescription. It limits those drugs or those harmful kind of substances falling into the hands of the people who should not have them. Because at the end of the day, you know, so, you know, as they are necessary, they're also harmful. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it's about keeping people safe or keeping as many people safe as possible. It's mm -hmm. about not misusing something which could harm a good deal of people. It's about just being responsible at the end of the day. So. What we want to do today is kind of talk about uh, what the best course of action is. It kind of, you know, I, I'd like to have fun with it. I'd like to keep it light. I, again, I don't want to have an argument. I want your, your well thought out ideas and thoughts about this. I would like to open up the discussion to everybody. Whatever your stance is, please share. That's exactly why we have this forum, uh, to see what people's comments are, what people's thoughts, ideas are. Uh, you know, Chris Brock had an old bit. He goes, you know, you shouldn't control guns. You should just make bullets really, really, really fucking expensive. Kind of a funny bit, you know what I mean? And sort of like, yeah, you know, if they... It's sort of, it is about limiting access to, you know, uh, mass weapons. Like, I, I, you know, I want you guys to get your thoughts ready. Uh, if, if you have to think about it, um, let's move forward. We can find some solutions and, ha and stop having these aftermath weeks where we're like, oh, yeah, a bunch of people got killed because someone decided they didn't like what they were doing or thinking or saying uh, and so decided to take a bunch of lives. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to have a week where we don't, you know, I mean, we don't have that every week, thankfully, but I would love for us to never have to have this kind of show or this kind of conversation. It would be fantastic. So one question I'd like to bring up, do you think gun control is in fact the issue or just control of specifically semi-automatic weapons? Is there a difference between madness and evil? How can we actually tell the difference? Right, and that's a really important question I feel because sort of if I'm talking to someone and they say something like crazy racist, like, yeah, but you know, the Jews are all like this. I'm like, I don't register, oh, that's an evil person. I register, that's Is a that crazy you're, person. You're a sick fuck. Yeah, I'm like, that's a crazy person. That person exactly. doesn't have logic lined up the same way a normal person should. In my head, um, serious background checks should be mandatory, right? Mm -hmm. Or, 100%. Or is it okay, you know, even someone who's not in the military to just go and buy, you know, a you gun know like you buy milk or tampons? You know, you know what's crazy? is that I was doing my research before coming on here today, right, so, yep. and it's not a background check that's regulated, but it's, it's not this whole process. Yep. It's legitimately a form that you fill out. That's part of your background check, is a form that you can fill out that can, you can easily lie about whatever's going on, right. especially if you don't have any previous criminal charges on your record. I mean, the point is it's not tough to get a gun in the United States. At I mean, all. that's really what it comes down to. Gabe, can you put that graphic up, man, the, uh, the yellow one that we had there? There it is. Buying a gun in America. So here it is, guys. Um, buying a gun. I forget where we got this, but I think it's... Uh, that's not important. The thing is, it's from the internet. I think oh, the, th the source is down there. Um, you know, buying beer. Uh, you show an ID. Actually, make it stop scrolling there, Gabe. If we can, do you, does it have to scroll, or can you make it stop scrolling? Yeah, I'll make it stop. Yeah. So get it up there to the middle there where we can... So buying a gun, uh, according to this chart, is easier than you think. So buying beer, they have... Uh, you know, you have to show an ID. You don't need a license, but you still have to show an ID. Buy a car, you need an ID, and you need a license. Uh, buy Sudafed, you need an ID, and they record the sale. Same thing when they buy a car, they record the sale. Um, but what's also crazy is that when you look at the bottom, buying a gun from a private seller, and not, just, not necessarily on the black market, but a private you know, yeah. merchant, that you know might be registered by the government. Mm -hmm. You don't need any of this. You don't no. need any of these things. You don't need to show an ID. You don't need a license, and it's not recorded. Yeah. As soon as you have a private seller, there's literally it's. And we saw that video. There was a video person. I forget when it was posted, but it's essentially a young boy, a 13 year old kid, who mm -hmm. goes. He tries to buy cigarettes, can't buy them. He tries to buy uh, porn, can't buy the porn. He tries to buy a scratch and win lottery ticket. He can't buy the scratch and win lottery ticket, but he goes to a gun show and he buys a 22. Like that, like no problem. So, anyway, yeah, it's that, I think I think you got the gist of the graph there, Gabe. It's okay, but um, I guess other questions when you ask you guys, you know, are, are there are you, there are gun owners out there? You know, how do you uh, how do you enact your responsibility as a gun owner? Is do we really have to get rid of all the guns? Is that the answer? I don't. I mean, I don't. That seems. Any extreme, any extreme solution, I think, is good, is not going to be the answer. Yeah, me neither. I just think that we need to be more careful. Of course, there's a black market for anything. We'll never be, we never, we'll never really be able to eradicate anything. No. There's always going to be a market for it. There's always going to be illegal activity. Absolutely. But 
Can Absolutely. we limit it? Probably. I don't know. The thing is for me, I mean, it's like, it's like anything. It's sort of like the, um, sorry, there's my phone here. It's sort of like the same thing, the, the whole idea of the semi-automatic weapon is the, if you're into that, if you're like, anyone should be able to purchase that, do you also think that if you have enough money, you can purchase a tank or yellow cake uranium or a nuclear warhead? Like, does it, it just doesn't matter. You should be able to purchase whatever you want because those are military weapons. Those are weapons of relative mass destruction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you know, as a culture, guns are, you know, are romanticized. You get the picture there of Dan Bilzerian with the girl with the bum cheeks out. Yeah. Kind of badass, got his pipes out, he's got the shooting the gun, he's wearing the white suit. You know what, it's, it's a form of power, it's super masculine. Right. It's, you know, it's glorified in video games and movies and in, in, in the media, quite I, frankly. I get it. I loved Deadpool. I love Westerns. I love that whole, you know what I mean? It's, it's fun, but it's, it's fantasy. It's a movie, you know, and it does glorify that. But it's also, you know, you're dealing in a fantasy world and that's fine. I just, uh, in the real world though, I think we need some solutions because it'd be really fun to never have to have this kind of show where we're like, why does this keep happening? And what's going on? And what's wrong with us that we're, we keep allowing this to happen? Yeah, it's crazy. So, you had some stats. Yeah, so before we get started, I wanted to shed some light on how much gun violence actually happens in America every single year. So according to the BBC, there is an estimated 310 million guns in the United States, while the population is just over 320 million. Now, also keep in mind that... Almost a gun per person. I know. And almost keep in mind that there are women and children in that, well, not even women, but children sure. in that, you know, number as well. Yeah. And keep in mind that 310 million, those guns, those are only the number of documented firearms. Right. So you can imagine yeah. what's circulating on the black market. You can imagine what's obtained illegally. Which will always well. be an issue. Oh, mm -hmm. we have a graph up here right now. Okay, so if you look at the firearm homicides per 100,000 people in developed nations, they actually rejigged uh, the other nations to make it fair because obviously not everyone has the same population as the United States. Canada, we're in second place, but the discrepancy between all the other countries and how far beyond that the United States is, is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to say, oh, fuck you, USA, you're garbage. You're not. USA is awesome. I've been to lots of places in the US. I love the States. You guys are so on point with so many things, but this is definitely an area where um, I think we can make some changes and make some improvements. So I'm opening up to, you know, our, our US uh, viewers, our UK viewers, if you're in, I don't care where you're in the world, if you have thoughts on this, please, by all means, I know that Australia has some strong thoughts on this. Guys, chime in, um, I want to, uh, I, I want to get your, your feedback, but you have some more info though. So in 2015 alone, there were a total of 372 mass shootings. And in the same year, just over 13,000 were killed by a firearm. That's a lot of people being killed by firearms. It's crazy. It's actually and crazy. 80% um, of all mass shootings, the gun was obtained legally. Mm -hmm. Fully legally, just like that's just legal purchase. That's 80, that's eight out of 10. That means that like whatever controls are in place that are legal right now aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, many, what's also crazy is many of the shooters actually showed signs of mental illness, but in only two cases, were those mental illnesses diagnosed. So obviously there's a problem with the screening process that goes into buying a gun. You can see, you can see it like within like a 15 or 20 minute assessment, you can clearly kind of get a feel for who the person is, but it's so impersonal that you're filling out a form instead of having somebody actually sit down and be like, okay, we're, we're, we're trusting this person with a weapon. But you know, it's, it's not important to actually sit down and talk to the person that we're giving this to to assess if they're actually sane or not. I think that that is part of the issue. I think it's a combination of mental health issues, uh, poisonous ideology, and then just access to a weapon that is lethal, hugely destructive on a massive scope. You know, there was a time when you know when the Second Amendment was written, and again, I'm Canadian, so I'm not very much brushed up on uh, on U.S. history, but I can tell you this: that when they wrote that, it took about you know 60 seconds to load a gun with one bullet. You know, you're dealing with muskets essentially. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, everyone is allowed a musket. Great. But now you have like semi-automatic rifles that can mow down 50 people in three minutes or five minutes or however long. You know, it, I, it, there's, there's, there's a problem. Technology the has gone past. Yeah, I feel maybe. Or maybe it's not the guns of the issue. It's a screening process that is so stringent that really you have guns in the right hands of the right people. I don't know. Mm. I say maybe we open it up. I don't know. You guys, you want to go in and see what people are thinking, what they're sure. saying? Sure, yeah. Okay. So let's see what people are saying. 
If crazy people, this is from Jeff Brenton, if crazy people realize they were crazy and got help, are they actually crazy? Well, it's a good question. You know, I think that's up to society to kind of try and help manage that. We can recognize people who are not necessarily dealing with a healthy mind. You mm -hmm. know, there, there, are, there are telltale signs. Of you know, course. they don't make the same types of choices or act the same way as other people, by and large, unless you're dealing with a sociopath or a psychopath, but even then sometimes there are telltale signs. That said, uh, typically speaking, if you're dealing with someone who's a sociopath or a psychopath, they're more calculated, they're probably going to do individual killings like a serial killer, like exactly. a De Dexter style. And I'm not making light of that, but I'm, I'm talking about someone who is more prone to uh, going out and, and, and treating a bunch of people. So yes, it is tough, but it, you, can, you can tell sometimes. But you know what's also crazy is the fact that guns are... I don't know how to phrase this properly. Yeah. That guns are, like, it's it's an almost desensitized way of killing someone. It's so easy to just... Well, it's easy. It's, it, it's easier. It's not easy. Obviously, it's not easy to shoot, like, to fire a gun at another, you know, human being. But it's a lot easier than having to physically kind of assault someone. It's, it's at the click of a button. And it's that, button. maybe that's the problem. It is a button. You point and you pull the button. Like I, literally anyone can shoot a gun. There's tons of stories of toddlers shooting their parents accidentally or themselves accidentally because it literally is that easy. You literally squeeze a trigger, which is a button, and uh, you make the machine do what it's supposed to do, which is shoot a bullet out and kill someone. Uh, so yeah, it is, it is tough. Um, uh, here's, I mean, I, want, I actually want to see what people are saying. Dennis C says, it's too easy to get a gun, and sometimes they go missing and end up in the wrong hands. Absolutely. 100%. How do you control these things? I don't know. I, have you seen those new, um, newer, they're sort of guns that you have to, it, it scans your, your fingerprint, mm -hmm. and you, you essentially have, only the person who owns the gun who's registered to it, whose fingerprint is scanned onto it, can fire the gun? That's kind of an interesting solution. I don't know. Maybe, maybe make all guns like that? I don't know. What do you guys think? I guess that's, that's it's also interesting, but with anyone being, almost anyone being able to buy a gun. Yeah. Um, I agree. Does it make that much of a difference? The, ex the accessibility. Sismwaj uh, Liege Twig, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, it's not even evil. It's spur of the moment uh, when someone is in a bad mood and a gun is accessible. I mean, bad mood is a bit of an understatement, but mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it is that kind of thing. These, these crimes of passion are just like, okay, no, I'm finally going to do it. So yeah, accessibility is a problem. Crystal Atwood says, we need to address the reasons behind the killings. Why do these people do these things? If they are mentally ill, they should be getting free treatment. Yes, free treatment is important. Uh, also, as a society, we need to be more open about mental illness and mm -hmm. say, you know what, I think this person is not well, and be able to approach that person or some kind of governing body to say, I think maybe this person is not well, and can we get him or her some help? Mm -hmm. uh, that's of interest. If people are embarrassed or ashamed to come forward when they're dealing with difficult feelings, which is often the case with mental illness, particularly in men, by the way, uh, it's going to make that even harder or easier, rather, to sweep under the rug. And I think we do need to have mental health, it, you know, uh, safety and, and health in place more and more, and not just in America. That's worldwide. Okay, that's not just a U.S. problem. Okay, that's it's a global problem. That's a global problem. Yeah. Okay, we're still kind of a little bit. I'm not going to say dark ages, but we still haven't come that far with regards to mental health. How we stigmatize mental exactly. health. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. um, let's see here. The mentally ill, if they are adults, can decide not to get help unless they become a danger to themselves or others. They cannot be forced to, and no documentation trail will exist. That's true. That's Jeff Benton. Uh, but I think there still are telltale signs. Like I was saying, I think sometimes you can tell. Not always. Not always. We cannot. You know, and gun control isn't going to fix every problem. Gun mm -hmm. control isn't going to solve any problem. You know, whatever whatever uh, measures are of enacted, not. it's not going to be the end of violence. Like we said, mm -hmm. like just take prescription drugs for an example. Like we were saying before, these prescription drugs do end up in the wrong hands of people. Like they, they end up in the streets. They end up in you know, like kids are dealing them in high school. They're stealing them from sure. their their parents' medicine cabinets for Pete's sake. You know, but. We are limiting in them, and you don't see every. It's it's a lot more rare to find prescription drugs on the streets. We are, you know, it's essentially control. Mm. Um, control is the issue. What are your thoughts, guys? Do you think? I mean, again, uh, you know, someone chimed in and said, "Oh, you guys are Canadian." Yeah, we are Canadian. Yeah. You know, but I have family in the states. You know what I mean? I have friends in the states. So yeah, it matters. And murder is also a global problem. Yeah. I don't think just because yeah. we're Canadian or you know we're not American per se that. We don't see that it's a problem. We have eyes, we have ears, we have brains. We discuss. Yeah, and it's and, a problem. And the reason the reason we're talking about it, USA, is that we care about you. We care about people getting shot Plain on your and soil, and you should too. You know, if it's uh, if you're cool with people getting shot up in the states, and of course you're not, because you know most of you are very very good people, as you know as far as I can tell. Um, there's a there's a there's a problem there. You know, and 
what are the solutions? Instead of just sort of like, ah, everything's fine, it's not fine. Mm -mm. Uh, so let's look at that. So let's see here. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. I want, to, uh, I want to see more of what people have to say. Crystal Atwood said, most of the shootings have not been terrorist cell related, but people with mental issues that snap. Yeah, I think mental, mental it's health a yeah. is a big deal. We're talking about it. So what are, what are some of the things we can do? What are your best ideas to maybe making this not happen again? Thoughts, go, hit me. I think also we really need to pay attention to our environment because I was reading up on the Christina Grimmie murder. Yeah. And the, the shooter, I, like his name is slipping my mind, the shooter was actually, you know, speaking about the way that he was going to carry out the murder at work and his co-workers instead of saying, hey, buddy, you know what? Like, maybe we should just talk about this or reporting it as a serious issue. Yeah. They just stayed quiet. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of the problem as well. When you see someone, a friend or a family member or someone that you know who's close to you that's like displaying, you know, telltale signs of insanity or like violent tendencies or violent thoughts that yeah. you should really take it seriously. Because by not doing anything, you're almost just as bad. If you could prevent it, why not? Well, apparently, uh, the fellow who uh, did the shooting in, in Orlando, uh, Omar Matina, I believe his yeah, name is. Yeah. Forgive me if I'm getting that wrong. I, I read the story briefly today. Yeah. Um, he attempted to buy a firearm initially, and he was on an FBI watch, watch list. list. He wasn't allowed to fly. But the second, the first place he went wouldn't sell him the gun because they felt it was a little bit, yeah, something's not right here. Didn't sell him. Second place, got it, no problem. So there's an issue there. But um, someone brought up an interesting point here. Nathan Pearson wrote and he says, if everyone has a gun, maybe less shootings will happen. And Nathan, on some level, I hear you, man. Like, I get it. Like, I, you know, uh, you, you don't know this about me, but I love Westerns. I love watching Westerns. I love the idea that, you know, it's a struggling world. Like, again, the history of America, trying to be born out of a very harsh landscape, hardened men making hard choices. Everybody's packing heat. Everyone has a gun. You step out of line, you know what I mean? You can regulate your life. I get that. I get the romance there. And I get the practicality of having a firearm to keep you yourself and your family safe. Mm -hmm. uh, not saying you shouldn't have a firearm in your home for self-defense purposes. Not saying you shouldn't have a hunting rifle uh, or shotgun if you want to go hunting. Be that guy. Even a handgun if you want to go target practice. But you know, you, you know what's also interesting about yeah. that point? When I was looking up stats, it says, in all of these mass shootings, in zero cases did a civilian fire back with a personal firearm yeah. in self-defense. Yeah. I mean, it, it never... It ne it's never been a situation where that solved the problem. Had there been someone there with a gun, maybe if the bouncer had a gun, I don't know. We can't sort of... Or, or would it just turn into a giant shootout? You right. never would it, know. Would it have been like the Wild West, a crazy, like, you know, are we going to have, are we going to have stories where, you know, you're having people shot in town square on a daily basis? Because that's kind of what the Wild West was. It was very violent. You're just like someone steps on the line, you get shot, uh, duel, shoot. I don't know. Maybe someone would have put the guy down sooner. I don't know. I'm literally saying I don't know because... Not everyone has a gun. Although statistically, as part of the stats that Bree read earlier, most of you almost do. almost everybody in the states could conceivably have a gun because there's a there's a minor discrepancy between the amount of people and the amount of guns in the U.S. So it already is kind of the wild and west. And even registered ones, keep yeah. in mind. It's so not, there's a lot more. Not solving anything. What's up, game? Uh, stats, right there. Oh, the stats. Uh, okay, here's some more stats. Do you support or oppose stricter gun control laws? If you look at the political parties, I mean, this we already knew. Uh, everybody is kind of even keeled on it, support and oppose. And if you go to Democrats, again, there's a, there's a, there's a discrepancy there. And then Republicans, the discrepancy is the other way. And then you have independents. But I think by and large, everybody, it kind of balances out where everybody that, kind of says, you know what? Yeah, whatever. Either or, neither here nor there. And I think, I think that's the problem. But I think there is, you know, there is, I think there's room for improvement as with 100%. all things. Uh, Obama spoke uh, at the POTUS, uh Protestant talks there, and he said uh, he compared it to uh, to seatbelt laws and and, uh, and car vehicle, vehicle accidents. So so car accidents were taking tons of lives in the 40s and 50s. So they did some studies and they changed the laws and they made seatbelts mandatory and airbags and they built cars better so that their frames could support impact. In the purpose was to keep people safe. Exactly. So they're doing their research. They're saying, okay, we have this problem at hand. We need to, you know, look into it a little bit more yep. to find, like, to figure out what's causing the problem. Yep. And you know what Obama also said, which was very interesting, that Congress has banned from doing, uh, Congress has banned um, from even doing any gun, like, any research on gun violence they're, at all. They're not allowed to do they're research. They're not allowed to do research. They're not allowed to look into it because everybody is so worried that the gun control laws will kind of eradicate guns completely, but it won't. It will never. But it's just about, you know, being a little safer and saying, hey, you know what? There is a problem. What can we do to kind of 
not eradicate, but make it better. So, I mean, absolutely. We just—it's just about improvement. I just—it's about me not turning on the news and watching, you know, my my, you know, my my American cousins being gunned down every every month or so. I don't like I don't like seeing that, man. It sucks, you know. Um, so, a uh, couple of interesting notes. Steve Voigt uh, chimed in. He says, "Shut down all gun manufacturers nationwide. Allow only the military and police to carry. Go on a world world, world excuse me. Go on a world tour to have other countries follow suit." Since the UK and Australia removed guns from their countries, the countries had few and far between shootings. That's, that's definitely an approach. Uh, that seems a bit extreme, the, the full ban across the board, but towards that might not be a bad idea. I don't know. That said, Joseph Botsy III comes in, he says, cars kill more people than guns still. So cars still kill more people than guns. And that's true. You know, I'm sure heart disease is up there as well. We're not saying that there aren't other ways to die, man. There's, there's tons of ways to die in the world. So we hear you, Joe, but guns still kill a bunch of people. The only thing is, we've done as much as we can with car deaths. We've and also, gone as far as we can with the seatbelts and the laws. We haven't done that with guns. Cars are also not manufactured to end lives. They're, yeah. That's the thing. Cars <laughs> aren't transport. Not, exactly. They're not, you they're know, killing transport. machines. They are not killing machines. Uh, uh, unless you're talking about a tank, in which case, well, yeah, then. maybe you want to purchase one. Um, let's see here. The reason you don't hear about, this is Ryan Beggs, he says, the reason you don't hear about shootings that were stopped by someone with a conceal and carry is because they don't turn into big issues. Okay, Ryan, you know what? Maybe, maybe that's a, maybe that's a real thing. Maybe someone with a conceal and carry is able to end a situation if they're a good shot, if they have a good presence of mind, if they don't get clipped first. Uh, I, that's an argument. I get that. But at the same time, I don't know that enough people have a presence of mind to be carrying a weapon that can take care of a situation quickly. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if that person gets hit, I don't know. I, again, I don't know what the solutions are. I do know that uh, a, a handgun is not the same thing as a semi-automatic rifle. Definitely I think we not. can. I, th I hope we can at least agree on that point. Of course. Uh, I don't know. Again, um, I don't know what the uh, what the solutions are. Uh, let's see here. Last two. Okay, Brian says. Plus, the last two big shootings were in gun-free zones. Sure. I mean, most. I think most shootings that happen are in gun-free zones. That doesn't control anything. So you got to you got to you got to get the controls in place before you got people walking into a gun-free zone. I think you got to be doing background checks, ideally. A hundred percent. I mean, just like, in, if I were in the states, I could go to the store, buy a semi-automatic, an AR-15, let's say, and inside of ten minutes, you know, with very limited background check, they don't know who I am. Go they don't from, know where I'm you from. know, go to a gun-free zone. Yeah, go anywhere. Doesn't matter. Just because you can't buy it in the zone know. doesn't mean you can't obtain it very easily. Yeah, let's see here. Andrew Drew says, guns aren't the problem, the problem is people. You know, I tend to agree, Andrew. I agree. I, you know, a gun yeah. doesn't think, a gun isn't, uh, doesn't have a, an agenda. It's or an inanimate any, object. Yeah, or like, poisonous ideology or a mental health problem. It's the person who's manning that machine. So yeah, so maybe background checks is the way to go. Maybe make it really stringent, make it tough. You know, right now it seems to be pretty easy. Why, why don't we talk about a little bit about security? Okay, let's talk about security. So. In these kind of regions where there's more violence, why isn't there more security? In terms of not necessarily being armed with guns, but metal detectors, about closer screening processes. What do you guys think about that? What about, you know, upping our security? Yeah. We want to know what you guys think. Yeah, security thoughts. Just before we get into security, though, Justin Bragg came in and says, you know, people can still have guns, just not assault rifles. Mm -hmm. I tend to agree. That's a military weapon, right? I mean, why would you need to have a gun that can kill a bunch of people? I mean... Unless there's a zombie apocalypse, and if there is, I hope the government will, you know, change any laws they have with regards to gun control. But failing that, you don't really need an assault rifle. You know, I no. get why you have a hunting rifle, a shotgun, even a, you know, a handgun in your home for self-defense. I get all that. I, I, can, I can get there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I understand. Um, it's the assault rifle, man. Like, who, I don't know anyone who I'd be like, yeah, I'm glad you have an assault rifle. Like, yeah. unless you're in the military or a cop or someone who's, you know, entrusted to protect people. Mm -hmm. um, these are my thoughts. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Is this live? Let's see here. Have you taken a training course to carry, to get a carry permit? If you're qualified and can hit the target like you're supposed to, you don't get your permit. So Tony McBrayer says, you know, there are, there are some steps to take. Uh, very interesting. So you gotta, you gotta get your permit. You gotta be able to hit a target. So you have to be a good shot. Uh, that's an interesting note. Um, let's see here. Adam A.J. Miller says, healthcare in this country is outrageous, as is let alone psychological healthcare. So I agree with your statement. So Adam's on board. I mean, I think what we're trying to do is just help more people stay safe. We want that. We want that for the states. Let's see here. What else do we have? 
Val, Val Bradshaw says, I predict that at some point in the future, the manufacturers of ammunition will be told by our Congress to halt the production. So like you can have all the guns in the world, but no bullets, game over. Which is, kind of goes back to Chris Rock's yeah, to that joke scan. is making bullets really hard to get as opposed to guns. So like have all the guns you want, but bullets are hard to come by. Kind of interesting. Let's see here. Nathan Pearson says, definitely think there should be a sit down with people that want guns to see if they're mentally stable to carry. 100%. Absolutely, That's man. That's exactly, it's kind of reiterating what we were saying at the beginning of the show. Conversation. Is that it shouldn't be a form that you fill out. It should be more of an interview process. It's, what you're saying is it's easy to lie in a form. You 100%. Know, I can be like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm no, Especially when no you don't have problems. any criminal record before. Sure. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting. Obviously, we're not going to solve any major issues today. Yeah. It's an interesting topic that we wanted to bring up, given what's happened uh, in recent history over the past, let's say, 10 years or so in the United States, uh, and in very recent history, in the past months. It's just sad to turn on the news and see that this is happening. It's a bummer. It doesn't matter what side of the, uh, the equation you're on. It's sad to watch innocent people just get mowed down for no reason. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not... Uh, we, don't, we don't like seeing that. Um, let's see here. Tony McBrayer says... Hundreds of mental health facilities were closed to fund Obamacare. No one talks about that. My brother works in the field. It's a mess. I didn't know that. So you know what I mean? There's things going on in the states where you know maybe there should be uh, there should be more help for people dealing with mental health issues. That's a big one, man. Mm -hmm. That's a big one, and I think it's one that we don't kind of talk about enough. Um, let's see here. I want to jump in. George Santos says, "What about uh, illegal guns? Criminals don't care." You're right, George. Criminals don't care. Black market, as Brianna already mentioned, is still going to exist. Of course, all that for anything. Still... You can buy anything, anything on the black market. Meth, heroin, all the babies. stuff that's illegal. You can buy babies on the freaking black market, you, you know? Buy a baby, no problem on but... the black market. That said, uh, what we're saying is, well, within the realm of like what we can do, within the realm of where we can make better choices... Why let's... don't we? Yeah, why not? Why don't we? We have the resources to do so, so why not? Why not? You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like saying, yeah, well, it's... Certain... It's kind of like working in a hospital and saying like, well, you know, some of these wounds won't heal, so let's not treat any of them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like, treat everyone. Hopefully, for the, you know, it's for the best. Uh, you know, you can fix some of the problems. You can fix some of the problems. That's what, uh, that's what we're trying to say here. So, uh, more thoughts, more ideas. Let's see here. Jack Edwards wants me to shave the koala bear on my face. I mean, I think you're a little <laughs> off topic, Jack. Uh, I hear you. I'm, eventually, I will shave it, but you know, again, you're off topic. But if you want to talk about guys, gun control, guys, it's protection. If you, it it's act actually bulletproof. It actually is Kevlar. It actually is. It actually is full Kevlar. This thing is full Kevlar, keeping my uh, my money maker safe, which is my mouth. Um, man, yeah. I mean, people come in and say this thing: lay a gun on a table by itself and see if it shoots someone. It doesn't. Of course, a gun again is just an object. It's about the people carrying the guns, and we gotta like police that. Mm -hmm. I love your comments, guys. Let's see here. I want to, uh, let's see here. Tony McBurner says, most folks for guns are for mental health care. For folks, but if the government is taking away the health care and trying to take guns, it's a lose-lose for everyone. Agree? Let's see here. Okay. Michelangelo Galea says, just look at Florida in the 1980s. Something like 90% of criminals shot in the act of a crime was by an armed, law-abiding citizen. Okay, so he's on the side of maybe people should have guns. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. That, that kind of creates a Wild West scenario think, for me. You know like, what? I think that there's a reason why the Wild West isn't the Wild West anymore. You know? Exactly. I don't know. Mm. What do you think? What were you gonna say? I don't know. I just I, I feel like the right people should have guns. There's nothing wrong with a gun itself. It's an inanimate object. It does, you know, it does do some good in society. Of course, like even look at the Orlando shooting. If the if the police hadn't had guns as well, that shooting would the the shooter would have killed more people. Right. So it's all about keeping those guns in the hands of the right people or people who are able to handle it, people who can handle the responsibility. Yeah. And then but then of course you got to be really strict about how do we decide who can handle the responsibility? Oh yeah, of course. That, right? That's, that's cool. exactly what I'm saying. I have a uh, I have a I have a, a comment who just came in from Enigis, uh, Enigmas Valdez who says, "This is a good question. If we have more control on guns, then what does that mean? What are we controlling? The age of the buyer, their mental health history. Gun control is just a catchphrase. We need to start specifying what it really means." A hundred percent. A hundred and ten percent. I agree. And 100%. I feel like. If we really yeah, kind man. of delve into the details, we'll feel a lot less resistance from the people are, who are so passionate about, you know, their rights and about, yeah. about guns in general. And again, which harkens back to what I think Obama was saying earlier, is he's not, we're not trying to take away guns from everyone. We're not trying to say, okay, let's go into homes and take away guns. What we're mm -hmm. saying is going forward, let's make a system, let's set up a system where it's not super easy to buy an assault rifle. 
you know, or a semi-automatic weapon, whatever the case may be. Just make it more uh, difficult to get your hands on a gun. Guns are always already very accessible in the States, as we saw by the numbers of guns versus numbers of people. You guys don't have a, can I get my hands on a gun problem? You have a, I can too easily get my hands on a gun problem. That, from an outsider's perspective looking in, that's what I see, and that's what the rest of the world sees. I don't know, but your comments, your thoughts, I want to hear them. Lay them at me. Let's see here. Do we want to, do we want to see uh, the drone? Oh, yeah. Uh, my producer grabbed this. Uh, let's put up that, that image of a drone. Maybe it'll lighten things a little bit. I mean, someone made a makeshift uh, gun with a drone on it. I mean, this essentially is just a homemade version of what the military or the government has access to on a much larger scale. Um, it's a bit ridiculous, obviously. Uh, anyone who took the time to make this, I don't know. Uh, but again, that's a handgun. That's someone doing sort of a, a side project. It's neither here nor there, but it is kind of, you know, it, it, it is, it's super dangerous. Well, what if, uh, what if something went wrong? What, what if course, you press the wrong button? Of course, button? but the, I mean, the issue is uh, that's just a silly, that's just a silly drone with a gun. It's just a crazy, that's like a one-off crazy, one-off thing. Mm -hmm. The issue is, you know, policing that. You're not going to be able to control whether people do with their gun. I mean, I'm sure that person, they see that person was doing something in a very safe environment. They just kind of wanted to see that it was a cool thing, a sort of like target practice. Mm -hmm. I doubt it would be used in that situation. Uh, for ill, I certainly hope not. Hope um, not. But listen, you know, uh, it's a tough issue. It's a tough nut to crack. We're not pretending that it's easy. Of course not. It's not easy. Nope. Uh, on both sides of the uh, on both sides of the argument, we can understand the reasoning. Um, we'll take one more one more question here. Let's see here. Pandora's box is open. This is from Ed Engstrom. He says Pandora's box is open. There's more guns in the country than people. Mm -hmm. Millions upon millions of people carry them on their person, concealed or otherwise, every day. So we're already there. I get that. What I'm saying is, can we improve the situation? Can we do something to make it better? There's always room for improvement with anything in life, anything at all. You can make it safe. There's always a way to make something safer. There's always mm -hmm. a way to increase safety for the average citizen, I think. So that's my thoughts on the, uh, on the subject. Let's see here. Jason, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing your, your name, it's Exel, Erxel Ben, Erxel Ben maybe? Anyway, Jason says, I live in Chicago. It took me six months to get my concealed carry license. It took almost $10,000 and 20 hours of glasses to get my gun, classes, excuse me, glasses to get my guns. The government takes advantage of us. I mean, I don't know if it's a take advantage thing, but I'm, I gotta say, Jason, I'm glad that it was that difficult, difficult for you to get that gun. Mm -hmm. Because I know that you went through the man hours and the money and you're going to respect that weapon now, and you know how to use it because and you, know you did the classes. And you know what it's capable of. You, exactly. You respect it more. You've, had, you, you've earned it. Yeah. You really have. I mean, it's not a black or white issue. We're not saying it's a black or white issue. At We're all. just trying to find solutions. You know what I mean? There's no, like, snap of the finger. It's not going to get solved today. And it, it can't be one extreme or the other, and it will never be, but it's about ha finding a happy and healthy yeah. medium. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's about finding, like, a, like Enigma was saying, is finding the specific solutions that'll help. I think more background checks could be uh, help. I think focusing on mental mental health issues, making that uh, an easy thing to uh, to manage for people to get help. I think that will definitely help a lot of things. And I yeah, and I also think the ban has to be lifted in order for us to actually do the adequate research yeah. on what's going on. All, right now, all we have is the numbers. We don't know the cause. We don't know the backgrounds. We need to know more yeah. and able to uh, so that we're able to do more. I mean, the fact that we can't even research the situation or that the United States can't even research the situation. Or I doesn't think, want to, and that, that's a problem. Well, I think some people want to and some people don't. I think they, they're, uh, you know, as, as Obama suggested earlier, people don't want to know what the answer is going to be because they're worried that, like, okay, well, therefore, you did the research, there is a problem, now we have to do, you know, very, very strict control and I'm going to lose my gun. Yeah. I don't think that's the issue. I think we're just trying to make people safer, right? At the end of the day, uh, you know, less dead Americans is what I want to see on the news. I want to see less dead Americans, man. More less love, people. less hate, right? Yeah. More love, less hate. Every day, man. Every day. Um, I don't know. Guys, uh, I, whatever your thoughts are, put them in the comments. We'll put some, uh, we'll put some articles up, uh, that Ask Men wrote up. I don't think we're going to solve the problem today. I just wanted to get your thoughts, your ideas. I wanted to kind of speak about this. Uh, I'm saddened that you know uh, shootings are still happening. I'm saddened that people... Uh, don't feel safe. That people are targeted. Um, that people go out for a, you know a fun night out and then and you know never come home. Like how many nights you're just like yeah let's go to the bar tonight let's have a good time. Yeah yeah and especially you, look it. guys it's Friday I bet a lot of you are going out partying tonight but it's not normal that we live in a world where we have to be scared or think someone could come in here at any minute and just open fire. Yeah I don't know man. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Now, Dennis Beckley says, Obama is leaving office soon. Hillary, a presidential nominee in her own words, has stated that she will get rid of guns by executive orders if she has to. 
What part of not wanting to take your guns away is unclear to you? I don't know. I mean, I'm, so Hillary wants to do that, I guess, but you know, Obama certainly does. And he's, I think he made the statement that more guns have been purchased while he was in office than in previous, in, mm -hmm. almost in any other uh, presidential run. So I don't know. Listen, guys, your, your thoughts, yeah, your ideas, uh, your engagement, we love it. We love hearing your thoughts about it. We like an open debate. Uh, that's one of the nice things about the internet. You can ask any question. You can answer any question. You can share your opinion. Uh, we appreciate that. We like intelligent thinking on the, on the subject. Um, if you have more thoughts, by all means, add them. Come back next week. We're going to talk uh, about more stuff. We're going to switch it back to something a little more fun. A little lighthearted. Yeah, a little more lighthearted. Yeah. Uh, sex and dating. Uh, grooming. grooming. Fashion. Yeah. You know, fitness maybe, you know, working about yeah, those, those summer pecs, stuff that, uh, that is fun and helpful to talk about. We appreciate you chiming in. Join us next week for more Guy Q Live. Thanks for your comments and uh, much love and peace to all the, uh, all the victims uh, out there this week uh, and their families. That's, uh, it's, it's a hard one, but uh, anyway, an important topic and uh, we thank you for bearing with us while we covered it. Be good to each other uh, and yourselves out there, guys. Have a good one.